And we're literally seeing an epidemic of these issues in the United States right now. Dr. Robert Melillo is the co-founder of Brain Balance Centers. One out of every 10 children in the United States now is diagnosed with ADHD. And that's a real increase. My name is Dr. Robert Melillo. My life's mission is to help kids and families with special needs. My wife, Carolyn, makes it all possible. Welcome to our family. Hello again and welcome to our show. I'm Dr. Robert Malillo and this is my wife Carolyn. We are here because we feel the mainstream media has ignored the struggles of families and individuals with special needs. We understand your struggles and we're here to provide information, support and to celebrate your differences. We want to highlight the heroic efforts of parents, loved ones and anyone who struggles with a disability and to provide a place where you can come and share your stories and inspiration. We want to be the voice for the voiceless and to provide inspiration and, most importantly, hope and support. Millions of families across this country in increasing numbers every year face unimaginable challenges in, on a daily basis, and we're here to help. We feel that those of you that need support, information, and help, that it should be provided to you, that you should feel that your differences that make your children feel special also be celebrated and nurtured, that no one should be left behind and ignored. We're here for the families and brave people with special needs. We will provide cutting edge research and clinical insight as well as everyday practical tips and resources to help your life be easier. We hope to inform, entertain, and humor, and most importantly, inspire you to never give up and always have hope that this is the purpose of the show and we feel is the most important issue of our time. Nothing is more important than the sacred bond between a parent, child, and family and you deserve only the best. So whether you are a child or an adult with a mental illness or a physical disability, an adult with a brain injury or a neurodegenerative disorder, or just an adult with depression struggling to get by, you are important and deserve a show that can speak to your needs and your differences. So we said each show we wanted to highlight a specific aspect. So we're going to be actually talking to a mom today and her son has a problem with what we call reactive attachment disorder, or better known as RAD. I think, is that what parents with uh, adopted children face normally? Is that Yes, an issue? it's very, very common that children that are adopted actually often have this diagnosis of reactive attachment disorder. And what does that mean? What exactly? Well, again, it's, it's really a, a neurological order disorder, kind of a psychological. But rea attachment basically is something that normally should happen within the first year of life. There's been really good research that shows that by one year of life, children can be put in four, four different categories of attachment. One is called secure attachment. Fortunately, that's the majority of kids. But there are three other categories of what we call insecure attachment. And there are different aspects of that. One type is seen with severe abuse, but mm -hmm. the other, it may, may come about as development or depending on the parents. But the interesting thing is that the first year of life, we can already predict in 85% success how that child will go on to form every relationship in their life, including with their own kids. Wow. Well, is this something that you can alter, you can fix? That's the good news. This isn't a genetic thing. We don't know, think there's anything wrong with the brain, but often it has to do with the way the parents are attaching to the child. So informing the parents how to do a better job with that or to, you know, uh, connect with their child. But again, if a child is adopted and they're not really touched as much or they have what we call sensory deprivation. Sure. These are issues. So by stimulating their senses and doing things, we can change it. So we're going to talk more about that with with the mom that's coming in. So coming up on the other side of the break, we will be joined by a woman whose son struggles with react reactive attachment disorder. Uh, we'll see you then. This is Dr. Rob Show. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Rob Melillo. I'm joined here by Laura Van Aken. Laura's son struggles with challenges connected with adoption that are very common, including reactive attachment disorder. So we talked a little bit about that before the break. Um, tell us about your son when you adopted him. How old was he when you adopted him? He was five months old. And so when did you get the label of reactive attachment and what, what brought you to that? Five years old and it was someone who uh, had met us a few months before and, and observed our family. 
and actually pulled me aside one day and, and asked me if I had ever heard of reactive attachment disorder. And that was the beginning of an amazing journey. And one of the things that you had said was that you had found out when you finally got to therapists that really could I explain to you what was happening, mm -hmm. uh, that you may have been doing some things wrong or the opposite of what you should have done. Absolutely. So why don't you talk a little bit about that? Well, you know, it's a, it's a parent's natural intuition to um, tell a child what to do or what not to do. Um, it's very natural for the, the parent to put the child in time out if he or she is misbehaving. Of course. But what happens with an attachment disordered child is that that child feels abandoned or rejected, which is exactly what they experienced either pre-verbally or post-verbally mm -hmm. when they were younger right. from adults in their life. And so when the primary caregiver gives what they perceive as rejection or abandonment, their fears are confirmed. You know, what, what you highlight there is very important because most of the attachment disorder uh, world is really looking at trying to work with the parent, meaning that right. you can give better signals to your child, and that's very mm -hmm. important. But Absolutely. again, the question is, why does it happen so often with children who are adopted? And that is a neurological basis. So the way I look at it is that we look at people that have what we call outside-in issues, meaning the parenting to the child, mm -hmm. not giving the proper signals, and being trained by a therapist or somebody that knows how to do that to deal with that. But then what most people don't realize is also what we call the inside-out. Child's brain has to be able to receive that, and if they have imbalances in development, then often that affects that. So, you know, we, we're going we're gonna to talk more about this at another time, but this is really a really fascinating topic. Mm -hmm. But what you saw as well was that you had changes when you changed your attitude, but it wasn't until you did really some neurological interventions and tried to balance out the brain that you really saw com much more resolution, correct? Yes. Yes, the attachment therapy that we did was effective, but only to a point. Right. So that you needed to do the neurological Absolutely. integration as well. So that's really important for people to know, because I don't think most people know that. So let's get back. Let's talk more about you, though. Okay. Right. It must be so difficult to have a child that acts out and, and you don't understand and you spend all your time loving and nurturing. But what about you? Do you get to do much for yourself? Or do you get to have a social life? Do you get to go shopping? No, no. except for groceries, things except like that. Except for groceries, and I bet yeah. you have to buy special groceries, and that takes a lot of time Absolutely. and effort, too. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I know that um, your son is such a big part of your life, but um, how do you feel? Do you feel like you're Laura, or do you feel like you're just his mom? I mean, do you ever get to feel like yourself anymore? For, for many years, I did not feel much like myself. I actually became depressed. Um, I was every once in a while invited to go out, and I didn't go because in my head I wanted to go out, but my body was just exhausted because of the, the, the emotional drain it had on me. I don't think people realize how hard it is to have a special needs child. I'm sorry, how hard it is. It is a, a, a beautiful, thankless job. What you do will make the difference in all the world for your child, but you also have to remember yourself, too. Mm -hmm. And I think when um, this is what we'll move on to the next segment is a, is a bit of a mommy boost for you, Laura, because mm -hmm. when you feel better about yourself, your child sees it, your husband sees mm -hmm. it. And I know that Rob has said 85% of marriages with children with special needs ends in divorce. And it's really important to take time for yourself. When was the last time you went on a shopping spree? Be before yesterday. Uh, I was going to say <laughs> yesterday. It had been months, if not years. And how I did don't that really... make you feel? Did that make you feel different? Did that make you feel like, Did sometimes did you not go out maybe because you just didn't feel like you yeah. had clothes to wear? Yeah. We didn't have money because we were spending it on, on therapy for our son. Whatever we could do for our son, we were doing. And so it was a money issue. It was an energy issue. It was a time issue. It was all of those things. And I just stopped putting my, uh, myself even second, really. And it was all about my son. your relationship with your husband at all? Somewhat. Yeah. He actually is a very, very supportive, I've been blessed, very That's supportive wonderful. husband. Very supportive, but it did put a strain. It does put a strain on our marriage, and we have to be very careful not to grow apart as a result. Right. The differences in parenting, the, the different opinions, things like that about how a child should be raised can really get interesting when you have a child with special needs. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. Yeah, so it's important that you guys got to take care of your heart. You got to take care of your home. You got to take care of mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. And if you're not taking care of yourself, 
And that's what I see all the time. Parents sacrifice themselves. It's basically they, they throw themselves on the grenade. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, they often lose their marriage and they lose themselves. Right. Well, we're going to cut to the break okay. and we're going to be back with Laura and a wonderful makeover. And we thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Welcome back to the Dr. Rob Show. I'm Carolyn Melillo, and joining me now is Laura. Laura's son, Josh, struggles with ADHD, and with all of her attention on helping Josh, Laura forgot the most important person in the world, herself. So Laura, welcome. Thank you. How do you feel? I feel hot. You are so hot. I you are hot. so yeah. hot. Where's my husband? <laughs> We're going to get him on the phone. Oh, we have your before and after picture up. Oh, boy. You were beautiful when you walked in, but how easy was it just to throw on a pair of boots, jeans? I mean, yeah. now you've got heels on. Yeah. How and easy they're comfortable is that? heels, too. They're comfortable. Yeah, they're great. Now, I really want to focus on the fact that it's really hard for a lot of people to go shopping. It's very expensive. But we went to H&M, mm -hmm. and let's tell everybody what your pants cost. Five bucks. Your boots cost. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. We have a beautiful dress. Seven dollars. Seven dollars. With these boots, I cannot tell you how hot Laura is. The point is, if you don't have time to go shopping, you can go online. You can look up these stores. If you see mm -hmm. crazy clearance sales, run in there. Also, you can print out coupons mm -hmm. from the website and bring it with you. Now, um, do you feel like a different person? I do. I what do. I'm Laura again. Like I, it, yeah. Laura, Thank you. Again. It's just, it's, it's amazing. It's liberating and I feel pretty and I feel put together and not like I'm, like I'm just surviving, you know? Absolutely. And let's, let's just, let's just say you're, you're Laura, you're Laura with a cute little flare sweater with a little swing in the back mm -hmm. instead of a sweatshirt or a zip mm -hmm. up. Laura with the $15 beautiful blazer yes. you had on before, which was gorgeous. Yeah. Or you want to be sporty, be sporty, but you got the little clip in the back that's so yep. feminine. So cute. Really nice. The best of all is you can get fabulous things mm -hmm. and you, I mean, it makes you feel better. It your does. kids will say, mom, I love the way you look. And of course your husband, it'll certainly make a difference, right? Absolutely. I cannot tell you how much fun I had with you. You were such too. a great sport and um, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Don't go away because on the other side of the break, Dr. Rob and I are going to go to the kitchen to cook up some gluten-free meals with Chef Patty Lerner of Sweet Megan's. Welcome back to the Dr. Rob Show. I'm Dr. Rob Melillo. Joining me is my wife, Carolyn, as always, and Chef Patty Lerner from Sweet Megan's. Um, so, Patty, you have a really interesting story, but I know it all starts with you were a nurse and your husband had some heart issues. Yes. Tell us about that. Uh, he was diagnosed early with uh, some uh, blockage that was um, a minor artery, but in order to be able to uh, do angioplasty on it, they would have to go through a major artery and he would have possibly needed open heart surgery. So we went with medication and diet. Right, so that's where you started working on diet and food and right. everything like that. Right. right. Um, but the real story and the, behind the name even of Sweet Megan's was that you had a niece named Megan. And, and yes. that was a really uh, tender but tragic story. Tell us about that and where the name came from. Um, Megan was um, very dear to my heart. She was, when she was a newborn, her mother did not have a mother. So I helped her. I had a one year old and I helped her with her and actually. She was having some feeding issues at the time. And uh, we became very close. And Megan just was very dear to my heart. She was diagnosed at 18 with a brain tumor. Oh. And um, I had been working with a doctor at the time. And he basically told me that she you know, had a geoblastoma and that nobody has survived. And so I, I knew that the end was near. And we took whatever time we had and we just enjoyed it. And you said that she ended up on the Ellen DeGeneres show? Or? That was her, her last wish was to um, Ellen DeGeneres. She watched her every day of her life and loved her. And she, she watched her on her deathbed actually wow. with us all in the room. Wow. And uh, Ellen really inspired her. 
So part of your motivation is that you also, uh, from the company that you started and the money that you raised, some of that money goes for that charity To the well. Dream Foundation, yes. Yeah, because so they sent her to um, L.A. for a week. Wow. And she was on the Ellen DeGeneres show. She was in her dressing room, and she was so happy. I now feel like I want to give back. Um, issues with your own children and that was where you really developed a lot of your recipes from right, right. so my, tell us about that my oldest daughter Kara um, became had stomach issues and I told her three years before um, she acknowledged the fact that she had a uh, gluten allergy that she needs to go uh, gluten free mm -hmm. and she told me no and one day I got a an email from my holistic uh, chiropractor and it told all about his story. He lost 30 pounds in a really uh, quick time and he was malnourished and very sick. And I forwarded the email to her. And five minutes later she called me and she said, oh my God, that's me. Hmm. And I told her that if she became gluten free, I would buy her all the products on, on the market because I knew nothing about it. I went out shopping that day. I bought her everything and she opened up all the boxes and all the cans and anything there was and she stood over the trash can and she tasted it and she spit everything out. <laughs> and I said, this is going to be a nightmare. Yeah. And I tasted it along with her right. and I said, I feel so bad for her. Right. And I made her a um, gluten-free birthday cake because her birthday was the next month. And the only cake I could come up with was a uh, chocolate tort, which is a flourless chocolate tort. And it's so rich. It's made with eight candy bars. Ooh. And it's really very good if you have a little bite of it. But I told her next year, I'm going to make you a cake. And um, I decided to start with a chocolate cake. And I made a chocolate cake. My husband came home and said, oh my god, that's unbelievable. It's a cross between Tasty Cake and Sara Lee. <laughs> and that's what we grew up on. So that's what he knew. And he said, that's a winner. And so that hence the, got you motivated to start a company for well, it. Well, when Kara tasted it and she said, Mom, I feel really sorry for anybody that has a gluten allergy, gluten, dairy, and soy allergy that doesn't have your cupcake. Oh. You really need to go into business. Wow. All right. Well, tell us about your business and tell us about what you have here, the products that we have in front of us, your cakes, mm -hmm. and also your neat pizza crust. Yes. That is the new thing that we're bringing out now. It's a pizza crust. It's all whole grain. There's lots of vegetables hidden inside. Um, How long did it take for you to come up with that crust? We, I came up with that crust um, from, my husband is a very large eater, and I had to find ways to make everything bigger. So I make it bigger and more grand with a big bowl because it's all filled with vegetables, and most of it is very low in calorie. Sure. So I came up with the pizza and I, I put a lot of vegetables in there, so it's not a dense food. It's more of a light food that's digested rather quickly in your body. <laughs> so it doesn't, there's no salt in it, very, very, very little. Um, and this is a staple in my house. So we're going to get Carolyn and, to help you cook a little bit, yes. right? Yes. All right, tell me what to do. Okay, this is a vegetable uh, tomato sauce that Ooh. I made. And what do you have in here? It looks like peppers, I onions. Have peppers, onions mushrooms, broccoli. Oh my goodness. And fresh tomatoes. It smells delicious. So you can put anything on the pizza. We have over here, over here we have a uh, chili pizza. Yum. That's oh, that made with really a sweet good. potato um, spinach crust. So this crust has sweet potato in it. That's different than that crust. But yes. Okay. Yes. This is uh, the basic crust that I make. All right. I will okay. put a little bit of this on. No, actually I won't. I will go with the avocados instead because <laughs> now we're I going to love bake it. You like baked avocado? Or you want to put it on after? I actually do. Put it. On. I actually do. I put avocado on everything. That's great. So and I like a lot of it. So I'm going to put it all on, and just take. Well, don't a forget little... that one last piece. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just. There we go. Right, then you can pop it into. Just slide it in. Wow. There you go. Okay. And then close that. And in a few seconds, you have. And this is one of the pizzas. This is just a homemade sauce with mushrooms. That looks beautiful. Can I cut a piece? Is, cut it up. Please, sure. My mouth is watering. And what's neat is that you know I find that kids one of the biggest things that they try to sacrifice is pizza. But you know if you make it tasty enough, they're not going to miss the cheese. 
Plus the fact that, as you were saying, mm. I love chips. I love to really good. nosh on chips. And if you break these up, you have chips you for have your chips. dips. You have chips. You just your... cook them a little longer, mm. and you make it a little crispier. Cool. And you could take, but the chili pizza is, you know, you make the crust a little crispier and you leave it in a little longer. That's delicious. Now, where can we get all this wonderful food? How do people go about ordering? They order on the website. Okay. It's Gluten Free Sweet Megan. And they, they can contact me, send me an email as to what their needs are. We ship all over. Do you have a phone number? Uh, it's 215-550-5813. Great. Now, a lot of your products, though, really, because it's sweet, Megan's, a lot of it is geared towards sweets. Sweets, but they're all whole grain. Okay. Everything okay. everything I make is whole grain. And gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free. Soy-free and peanut-free. We're a wow. 100% peanut-free facility. That is fantastic. So anybody that's worried about a, a peanut problem, you know, or an allergy. Well, even just Look. birthday cakes for Look. children, my goodness. These have Dr. Rob's show on them. And tell us what these are. are. These are truffles mm. that are made with all whole grain. This is a uh, coconut almond chip um, truffle that is, and this is a chocolate raspberry. Mm. Oh it's a mitt for parties. This is amazing. For favors. Oh my God. They're a great Sweet thing 16. to bring to somebody's house. Oh my goodness. Because they're so unusual. And how thoughtful. And people love Dr. Them. Rob's show on a stick that was very thoughtful. <laughs> yes. Usually says sweet Megan, so you'll know when you see them. And these the store. cakes. This is a chocolate chocolate uh, cake with chocolate icing. They're beautiful. These are our cupcakes. We do uh, a vegan uh, carrot cake that is made with quinoa and uh, walnuts and raisins and almonds and you name it, it's in there. Beautiful. And I started to make an apple pop. That's a whole grain crust as well. Well, you know, this is, all this stuff is so right. great. So I hope that our audience really looks you up. I mean, you're a woman who's a self-made entrepreneur, business person, employing people, and you're doing a great job. So thank, thank you. you so much for being here. Thank everybody for being part of our show, and we'll see you next time on the Dr. Rob Show. Thank you.